There are a variety of ways to install double channel hip rail on your high tunnel, and this is the second such video on the topic our channel has made. Some double channel hip rail will attach to your structure with just self-tapping screws, but today we're going to walk you through the installation of a double channel hip rail that also uses nut and bolt attachment hardware. This type of hip rail is easy to install, and with the nut and bolt attachment hardware, it comes with a lot of strength. I've put some direct links to all of the material we used in the making of this video in the description below. The base materials you'll need to install this type of hip rail are the double channel itself, connection plates, tension bands, two hole straps, nuts and bolts for the two hole straps and tension bands, and self drilling tech screws. The tools you'll need to have on hand are channel locks, vice grips or a similar clamp, an impact driver or a socket wrench, a drill driver, a 7 16th inch deep well socket, a 5 16th inch hex head driver bit, and a torpedo level. So to begin, we're going to find our tension band. And this is what a tension band looks like. And you can see here that the tension band has one flat side, and then the other side is crimped. We're going to push that tension band on our end hoop right near where our hip rail is marked. And you can see here that the tension band has the flat side on the exterior of the tunnel. And so you're going to line that up on the structure itself, just as you see here. Now you're going to have to crimp with channel locks the end of that tension band. This will make it easier to get a bolt through the holes when you're connecting the channel. Now locate the slot on the back of your double channel. This slot will receive the bolt heads for the connection hardware. This includes the tension band, which we just put on, and the subsequent two hole straps. So here I'm going to show you how easy these slide in. The bolt head slides right into that slot. You can move it back and forth, uh, but you can't move it out of that slot. So it's going to be really secure. So go ahead and place that bolt in that you're going to use to attach your tension band and leave it in place when you lift up that double channel. To make it easier to put the double channel in place, we have vice grips attached to the hoop itself. You can see here they act as another set of hands when we're putting things in place. So we're going to line up the hip rail with the tension band we previously installed. And you can see here, like we uh, mentioned in previous steps, we're going to crimp this with the channel locks to bring those holes closer together. And both the flat side and the crimp side will be on the interior of the structure behind the hip rail. And you can see here we're going to line up the, the holes in the tension band with the bolt that we put into the slot on the back of that double channel. And once we have those lined up, we're going to thumb tighten the nut that goes with that bolt, and it's going to look like this. We're not going to permanently tighten down on this quite yet. We want to make sure the double channel is seated as it should be. And as you can see here, you want that double channel to terminate uh, right at the edge of that end hoop, right where this red line is. And the reason you don't want to attach it to your end hoop is you're going to use that space in later steps for single channel that will go right over your end hoop. Some structures already have all the lines marked for where the hip rail will run. If your structure does not have lines made, you'll have to make them on all of the hoops so that you can follow where to put your hip rail. To do this, you'll measure to a point on each hoop right before the bend becomes too dramatic on that hoop and you'll match that mark the full length of the tunnel on all the other subsequent hoops so that you can get a straight run of hip rail installed. Until we tighten the nut and bolt on this tension band, we can move the hip rail up or down until it lines up well with that line. Making any necessary small adjustments with where that hip rail is going to line up on the hoop, we take an impact driver and a 7 16th drive deep well socket and we'll secure it into place. Here you can see I'm just kind of bumping it up and down a little bit, making sure I'm uh, resting even with that line, and I'm pinning it in. So let's take a look at the front of the hip rail. As you can see, we're lined up with the edge of the hoop, and we're right on top of where that line is. After that tension band's been secured, we're going to slot in a number of other bolts, two for each interior hoop connection point on that hip rail. And so we're just slotting those bolts right into the back of the hip rail. And um, that this is happening on the end opposite of the tension band. And we're going to slide these down to the next hoops. And you can easily just put the bolts on either side of a hoop. And we're going to thumb tighten the uh, two-hole strap to the hoop itself, as you can see here. 
And for now, we're just thumb tightening on these nuts. We're not going to try and secure it because we still may need to adjust the, the hip rail as far as whether it's hitting the line or not that we have on all of the hoops. So as you can see here, this is what it will look like when we're thumb tightened on. And here we have the line on our hoop. We might need to come up or down depending on where we are in the structure. Underneath that we have a torpedo level on the side of the hoop right before the bend. And we want this to be uh, reading level side to side. And if we need to adjust the hoop, we can push on it or pull on it before we secure the two hole strap on the back side. We're looking good now, so I'm pinning this in with the 7 16 uh, deep well socket. Don't forget to tighten down both sides of the two hole strap. And once we have that in, we're going to take a look on the inside to see what that looks like. And you can see that the two hole strap has been pulled flush against that hip rail, uh, making it nice and tight. After that two hole strap secured, it's time to move on to the next one and repeat that entire process. Making sure it rests on a line and the hoop is plumb and you'll tighten it down. Eventually you're going to need to connect a new piece of double channel to the piece you just installed. And where two pieces of double channel meet, they must be connected with the splice plate. Because the splice plate is covering the slots on the back side of the double channel, where the two pieces meet, there's no two hole strap securement here. Instead, they're screwed to the hoops and to the plate themselves. Here's how to connect the double channel together. Adjust your vice grips so that they can hold the splice plate to the back of the double channel. You'll definitely want to use vice grips here so that that plate doesn't spin when you're attaching with screws. Uh, if it hits your knuckle, it's going to take your knuckle off when it's spinning. So go ahead and throw a, a vice grip on here to hold it in place. Then I'm going to go ahead and throw a level on the hoop just as we've done in previous steps. We need this hoop to be plumb just like everything else, even though we're not using two hole straps to secure. Uh, upon moving the, the hoop a little bit to, to get it in plumb, I can see that I'll be able to easily drive two screws through the double channel and into the plate without hitting the hoop itself. So I'm going to go ahead and do this and attach the splice plate directly to the double channel. This will allow me to get the next piece of double channel set up and the splice plate's not going to move. Now that the next piece of double channel is attached to the splice plate with the vice grips, I'm going to reference that level and make sure that the hoop is plumb before I throw these screws in. Now as you can see, the two screws that I'm, I'm throwing in here, they're not making contact with the hoop. That's because uh, the location where the hoop is plumb is directly in the middle of where those are meeting. Now this won't always be the case depending on how you install your ground posts, but for me, there's going to be six total screws holding this hip rail into place at the point of the hoop. You're going to want to make sure you're doing as I'm doing here. Driving two screws through the double channel hip rail, through the splice plate, and directly into the hoop. I'm lined up with the line for the hip rail bottom, and my level is reading plumb, so I'm throwing these two screws in here. After these two screws are in, I've now completely attached the hip rail to the hoop right where the two pieces of channel come together. And here's what your hip rail will look like after all those screws have been driven right where the connection occurs. After you're all connected up there, you'll go to the uh, free floating end once again and slot through more bolts uh, so that you can connect two hole straps to those hoops that make contact with the double channel hip rail. And once again, once you uh, attach those bolts to the, uh, the hoops, it'll look just like this. And so you'll repeat the process that we covered a little bit ago on all of the hoops that make contact with the double channel hip rail uh, that will get these bolts. And where your double channel ends, you'll put the splice plates on and connect the next piece of channel all the way down your structure and on each side. So you'll repeat the processes that we covered already. And then when you get to the end, uh, just as we covered with the tension band how it began, we want that double channel to terminate in the exact same manner. So here you can see I have the tension band in place, I've thumb tightened on a nut, and once it lines up with the hip rail marks we made in previous steps, we're going to tighten it down with the 7 16 inch deep well socket. Uh, I'm making the last minute adjustments, you saw me kind of knock it there with my hand, we're just trying to line up with the line on the, the hoop. And so we terminate just at the edge of the hoop as previous steps have indicated and we're ready to move on to the final step. We're going to add one last securement line of defense here and so on the exterior of the hip rail wherever we make contact with the hoop 
we're going to drive two 5 16 drive self-tapping tech screws through the double channel and into the hoop. So everywhere we have two hole straps on the inside, we have these two screws on the outside. And we're going to move on to the, the next hoop after this one and all the way down the structure and on both sides until we've secured all of the hoops. Once you've followed all of the steps outlined in this video, you've now completed the installation of this style of hip rail, and you can move on to the next step of your project. When plastic is eventually installed on your structure, this is an example of what it will look like. A finished hip rail holds the plastic to your structure with spring wire, and it also is what your roll-up side will attach to. If you're interested in seeing more videos relating to season extension and season extension structures, please subscribe to our channel. And if you're interested in any of the materials used while making this video, I'll have direct links to where you can find them in the description below. Thanks for watching.